Hi, and welcome back to the next chapter in this series, SQL Server on Amazon RDS. I'm John McCormack, and today we're going to be talking about automating SQL RDS with PowerShell. So PowerShell is my um, interface of choice here, but there's an equally valid option to use the Amazon AWS CLI. So most of the functionality between PowerShell and CLI is pretty interchangeable. And really, the main thing that varies is the syntax. So PowerShell is familiar to a number of SQL Server DBAs, primarily because we have a history of working with Windows, which is where PowerShell was originally created for. And if we do work with automation, PowerShell is one of the things that um, would be our first choice. So I felt that doing this um, demonstration with PowerShell was the best way to go. But it's equally valid to do all this with CLI. Um, I'm going to talk about how you authenticate via IAM user or role. Um, in my case, it's going to be an IAM user because I'm using my own laptop. But if you had a machine or service within AWS, then you could actually use roles, which are a little bit more secure. I'm going to just talk through what's required to install the AWS PowerShell module. And then I'm going to talk through some common commands. So we can find out how to list information about instances we've got, how to create new ones. We may want to start and stop them for uh, cost saving efficiencies. Um, if, they're, if they're not production instances, we might want to remove old instances. We might want to take sort of manual backups using uh, snapshots. We might want to even restore full instances from snapshots. Snapshots cost money, so we might want to remove snapshots as well. So there's a fair little bit to cover, but we're going to go through it fairly quickly. Um, one thing to remember with PowerShell is get help is your friend. So if you don't know exactly uh, how a command works, then by using the get help in front of it, then you will get help. It'll give you some examples and some more detailed uh, documentation. Uh, out grid view is something that I like to do. You can show your output in any way that you prefer, but I find that using out grid view, it just makes PowerShell really, really readable. So let's take a look at the AWS console, first of all. So here we are in the AWS console, and as you can see, we have our recently visited services in there. And the one that I'm wanting to do here is IAM. So IAM is Identity and Access Management. Um, looking at my security dashboard in here, it's giving, it, giving me a bit of a warning that I need to rotate my access keys. That's because I've got some uh, fairly old keys that, that do need to get rotated. Um, so let's click in Users. And the one that we want to do here is the John API. The other ones don't actually have any um, access at the moment. So the John API, I've attached some policies to give it different permissions. Um, it has RDS full access, which is the relevant one here, because it's RDS that we're managing. And if we go into the security credentials, we can see that we have uh, access keys, and they also come with uh, private keys. So this particular access key here that ends with the M7H we're going to use today. And then after the videos go live, I'm going to make that inactive and rotate it, create a new access key, just for security reasons. So the first thing we need to do is install the module um, from the PowerShell gallery. And the way to do that is install hyphen module, dash name, and it's AWS PowerShell now. This won't work from here. Um, if we just run F8, I'll show you that you need to be an administrator. So what I'm going to do is just copy that. And if we open a just a standard PowerShell window, as an administrator, say yes to that, and paste that in. And that's really all there is to it. Now, I, I've already installed it. If that wasn't installed already, then it's going to prompt you to accept it. Um, so you just do install module, pass in the parameter, and say either Y for yes or A for accept all. Next thing you need to do when using PowerShell is set an AWS credential. So I already have one saved here as my credentials. 
it's saved in a place in my C users and if you follow that link through it takes you to a JSON document called registered accounts so it has some information there um, it's all kind of decrypted or encrypted rather so that you can't really read exactly what what it is but the way you would set that is you would set your AWS credential and you pass in an access key a secret key and store as you give it the profile name that you want to use so that each time you run you just need to run the store credentials command so if I run that that's kind of fake details that came from the AWS documentation so once we've done that it's going to update the registered accounts.json and if you have a look now you see that not only does it have my AWS credentials as it previously had but also has my new profile the first command to show you is get rdsdb instance and I'm going to use the region US East 2 so if we pass in US East 2 and run that then it gives you the information about an instance that we have running in there which is the demo DB it's not always the easiest thing to, to read. So if we pass it in and we select specific columns that we want out, so the instance identifier, the status, the engine and engine version, the instance class, and the uh, DB instance ARN, which is the Amazon resource name. Let's just run that through. Shouldn't take too long. And then in the background, it's popped up a little window, which as you can see is a lot more readable. So it's told me that the demo DB instance is stopped at the moment. Um, that's because we're not actively working on it. So that will save a little bit of cash. It's SQL Server Express Edition. It's version 14. We used a T2 Micro, which was the cheap instance uh, to use. And that's the ARN. Now, we've also been through a module on how to create an instance using the GUI. If you're going to be creating a lot of instances, um, and it's more than just a one-off, then you would be as well using PowerShell or even the, the CLI. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to create an instance in the region EU Central 1, which is Frankfurt, and I'm passing in um, an instance identifier for it, so it's Nebula Frankfurt Dev, and various other information, so the security group, the amount of storage, which is the 20 gigs. They, these are all the same as, as last time around. Um, the instance class is a T2 Micro, it's Express Edition, that's my admin username and password. I've said I want to do it in Zone 1A, and I want to use the port 50,000 rather than the default port, and that is the latest um, version um, that is available. Okay, so let's quickly run that through it. So that's completed. It doesn't mean that the instance is created yet. It's still going to have to spin up like the, the one did that we created manually. But as you can see, it did not take long to run at all. And if you're doing this regularly, or if you always want to start up an instance with the same details, then that can be scheduled and automated. If we go back into the AWS console, this time we're in RDS. Now, what I had done prior to starting the recording was load up all the RDS instances in Frankfurt, which are none. If we refresh this here, then we'll see that there is now this instance, the Nebula Frankfurt Dev, which is the Express Edition, and it's in the creating stage. That's going to take a while to create, so I'm just going to take a little pause and we'll come back once that is created. Okay, so the instance has been created now, and it's just in the backing up status, so it's just going to take an initial snapshot and then it will be ready to use. So first of all, I want to create a new RDS DB snapshot, and I want it to be from the Nebula Frankfurt Dev instance, and we're going to call it Nebula Frankfurt Dev Key. So that means that the snapshot won't be automatically uh, deleted at the end of the kind of normal maximum 35 days uh, that you pay for your uh, built-in backups. We'll wait until this backing up has finished and then we'll get on with that part. Okay, so the instance is available now, so we can get to work doing some of the other commands on it that we were looking to do. So here we are back in VS Code. 
Um, the first thing that we want to do is create this um, new snapshot that we want to keep. We're passing in the instance name, the name of the snapshot that we want to, to call it, and we're passing in the region, which is EU Central 1. And if we create this, what that's going to do is create a snapshot that won't be deleted until we actually delete it. Okay, so that's going to sit there for as long as you need it. We can also look and see what snapshots we have in play to work with. Again, there's quite a lot there, so let's just add that out to grid view. It's up here. So we can see that um, there's a few here with various names, mostly from different uh, conferences that I've spoken at, and I should probably just get around to cleaning them up. Um, there's one that was created last night. No, sorry, that's the one that we created right now, and this one that was created last night. Okay. One thing that we can do is we can, when we've backed up an instance, we can actually restore a whole new instance from that snapshot. That's particularly useful if you want to um, restore a production snapshot into a dev test or UET environment. You can just do the restore um, directly like that. Um, in real terms, you probably want to put something in between where you're actually cleaning up the data before you make it available to dev test. But again, you could use this uh, onto some kind of staging instance where you, you apply your uh, data masking techniques. Okay, so that snapshot's available now. Let's just run this to, to prove that out. If we have that in the grid view, we can see that it's available. So let's create a new instance using that snapshot. We're going to call the instance Nebula Frankfurt Dev Restored. We're going to pass in the identifier for the snapshot, which is Nebula Frankfurt Dev Keep. Okay, so that, again, the command has completed quite quickly, but it will still take um, several minutes for the instance to be up and running. Instead of using the console, let's actually check it using PowerShell. So we know that we're in EU Central 1 this time. And let's list out the instances that we've got there. So we have the Nebula Frankfurt Dev, and now we can see that Nebula Frankfurt Dev Restored is creating. Whilst that's creating, I want to move on, do a couple of other tasks, and then we'll um, finally get rid of the Dev Restored. So one of the great things um, that can be done for AWS cost optimization is starting and stopping things uh, when they're not in use. Um, RDS allows you to stop an instance for up to seven days, if you don't go back to it in the seven days, it will start it back up again. So it's not like a permanent solution. But if you just need things off overnight or over weekends, then start and stop is an absolutely fantastic option. You can schedule that using Cron or some other scheduling tool um, in order to make this happen. So what I want to do here is I want to just run the stop RDS DB instance and pass in the Nebula Frankfurt Dev instance identifier. Okay, so that's gone through there. And again, if we're to scroll back up to our get rdsdb instance command, let's run that in. And you can see that where previously that said available, it's now saying stopping. So it's really as simple as that. It's a one liner that you can have scheduled and it will um, take up and take down your instances um, as and when needed. Okay, so the instance is available now. So let's just have a um, quick look, let's run the same command as, as last time to get the information up. And we can see that the main one that we had originally is stopped and the new one is available. So we can really do what we want with those now. Uh, the first thing that I said I wanted to do is remove the snapshot because I'm not going to use that again. And you do that, then that's away. And that's great for cost management. If you don't need things, get rid of them so that you're not paying over the odds. The next thing we want to do is remove the instance um, because if we don't remove it, even though it's stopped, it's going to start costing us money in seven days time. And that's happened to me before and I don't want it to happen again. So 
there's the instance done. Let's just do it for the restored instance as well, just keep things nice and tidy. Whilst, and that's it being deleted now. Um, we just want to go up and just list out the instances one last time before we finish up. Now we can see that the two instances that we created for the purpose of demonstrating PowerShell are now being deleted. So that kind of ends the tour of looking at um, AWS PowerShell for managing your SQL Server RDS instances. I think you should have a go at it and see how you get on. And there's many, many more commands that we haven't covered here. Thank you.